Okay. This one, in case you're watching this and you probably don't want to watch this, I'll save you a little bit of time. This is mostly geared towards the APC class. This problem is going to be pretty messy. In fact, I was going to make it even harder than this, and then I started to solve it, and I was like, mm, not even I really want to bother with that one. It's not the sort of thing that I think you would see on the AP exam, but I could be surprised. Because you're going to find partway through this, I'm going to have to use a trigonometry identity in order to finish solving it. But we will see something interesting along the way. I am going to be in a position, let's see, oh, I didn't actually put numbers in here. Okay, that's fine. We can do it as kind of a general one, or semi-general, because I've put in one or two things that are equal to zero, so I didn't have to deal with it. So this is going to be kind of a hybrid problem. But I will tell you this. It's your standard kinematic pro or projectile motion problem. This time it's going to be on level ground, just because I tried doing it at not level ground, and that got really unpleasant. Maybe we'll solve one like this, not on level ground. We've got some angle theta, and to give you an idea, we don't know what theta is. We're going to solve for theta. We've got some initial velocity at an angle theta. For this, I'm going to give you the velocity, the initial velocity. Basically, assume we have it. It's a number of some kind that we have. It's information. But we're just going to treat it as a variable. Okay? And we will have how far away it goes. Okay. So we're going to split this into two dimensions, like we normally do. There's delta x. We know this. This is some number. Okay? Could be any number. We're just going to use it as a variable for now. V final in the x. We don't know. Probably don't care. V initial in the x. Well, we know V initial, and we know when we draw it out, I'm going to draw it right here, which is kind of in the way, but we've got theta, V naught, we've got our SOHCAHTOA, we've got our X component, our Y component, we will find that this component is V naught cosine theta, this component is V naught sine theta. You guys are probably getting used to that by now, if not, Look through the other videos, we kind of go through them, and it should be becoming second nature. The sooner you get that down, where you've got a good feel for it, you draw it out and then can immediately fill in what it's going to be, the better for you, because then you're going to save a lot of time on the AP exam. So, V naught in the X is going to be V naught cosine theta. Time, don't know, but we'll probably get that from our Y direction. And then our acceleration, like usual, is zero meters per second squared. I'm going to give you that that one's actually zero. In fact, the only numbers that I'm going to use in here are going to be ones that happen to be zero, and that's mostly to clean up the math that we have to do and make it not get to the, I am going to hug my knees and cry instead. If you're hearing something in the background, I believe they are locking up the building, so I need to finish this up soon. Delta Y, well, this time we're coming back down to the same height, so that one is also zero meters. Or, I'm sorry, that's another zero. This one is zero meters. The final in the y equals, don't know, probably don't care. V naught in the y equals V naught sine theta. We know V naught, it's a number. We haven't actually been given it, but we can assume that we know it. We do not know theta. Theta is what we are looking for. Okay? Our time, we don't know, but that's our bridge to the x direction. And then finally, our acceleration. We know what that is. It's negative 9.81 meters per second squared. We're going to call that g, okay? Just to hold the place for it. We know the number that goes in there, but I'm not putting in a bunch of numbers, so we'll just use variables. It'll make it look better. All right. So, first of all, we have, we are looking for time. We know our displacement in y. We know our acceleration and y, and we have something that we can work with in our initial velocity in y. Okay? So let's see what we get by doing this the regular approach. We don't know and don't care about our final velocity, so we're using equation 2 on our chart. We end up with delta y equals v naught in the y times time plus 1 half at squared 
When I plug in our values, delta y was equal to zero. V naught in the y is V naught sine theta. We're going to multiply that by time. Plus one half g t squared. I'm going to divide both sides by t. Like I said, originally I was going to have it at a given height, but oh, that, that made it get really, really unpleasant very quickly. So we divide both sides by t. 0 divided by t is still 0. And then this t is going to cancel out one t there and another t there. So we get rid of that t and our t squared. So we end up with v naught sine theta, I don't know why I put the parentheses there, plus one half g t. OK. So now, because I want t by itself, I'm going to subtract this over one half g t minus one half g t. Sorry, that's equal to 0. And we end up with negative one half g t equals v naught sine theta. Okay? I do a little bit more algebra. I'm going to multiply uh, this by 2 over g, negative 2 over g, times negative 2 over g. That's going to, the negative 2 is going to cancel out that negative and 1 half. Over g is going to cancel out our g. And we're going to end up with t by itself, which is what we want. t equals, what is that? v naught sine theta times negative 2 over g. OK. We've got a value for t. Cool. It's not pleasant, but we've got it. So I have negative 2 v naught over g times sine theta. It's the same thing over here. Negative 2 v naught over g times sine theta. So in this case, we've got information for our x direction, as unpleasant as it is. We don't care about and don't have our final velocity in the x. So we're going to use our second equation, like usual, delta x equals v naught in the x direction times time plus 1 half a t squared. The a is in the x direction, so our acceleration in the x direction. I'm going to save us some time and remind us that that guy is 0. Gets rid of that whole term. It goes to 0. So we simplify it out, and we can really use to simplify it. Our v naught in the x direction was v naught cosine theta times our value for time, which was negative 2 v naught sine theta over g. Is that right? Yeah. OK. Now, when I take a look at this, I can make this jive a little bit better, distribute some things out. I'm going to take this and multiply it in there. And I'm going to end up with delta x equals, there's a minus sign that I'm going to deal with in just a moment, minus 2 v naught squared cosine theta sine theta all over g. OK? Now, I didn't solve for any final velocities or anything. That's good. OK. So I'm going to make a quick adjustment here so that we can get what we're used to. So g, as we usually deal with it, is equal to negative 9.81 meters per second squared. OK? So if I plug that in here, that's actually going to get rid of our, my negative for me. So delta x equals 2 v naught squared cosine theta sine theta all over 9.81 meters per second squared. Just to clean it up a little bit. And there's one final thing that we're going to do, and we'll be almost done. There's a trigonometric identity. Cosine theta times sine theta equals did I write that down? Please tell me I did. Oh, I'm sorry. 2 cosine theta times sine theta equals 
sine 2 theta. If you don't believe me, look it up, either in a math textbook, should it have it, or you'll probably just Google it. I'd recommend Googling it. It takes less time. Should be able to find it, but this is a trigonometric identity. There are a couple of those scattered around. I'm not recommending you memorize this by any way, shape, or form. Um, but it is one that we're going to use because right now we have a 2, we have a cosine theta, and a sine theta, all multiplied together. So I can simplify that. Delta x equals... But these guys go together. So I'm going to look at just the v naught squared real quick. v naught squared. 2 times cosine theta times sine theta gives me sine 2 theta all over 9.81 meters per second squared. Our regular value, positive this time, for the gravitational acceleration. Now the reason I bring this up is there is an equation for range if you're dealing with something that comes back down on level ground. I may have mentioned it to you. I never use it. The textbook that I got it from says that it is r equals velocity squared sine 2 theta divided by g, where they're using g to be just 9.81 meters per second squared. That look familiar? It should. We just derived it. OK. But in the end, despite that, I'm still looking for theta. So let's, this is interesting to note, but let's move on. I don't advocate using it because it only works if you are falling back down to the same height. And the AP test really, really loves cliffs. So it's pretty much not applicable. Besides, I prefer having you guys focus on the more general approach to the problem. But the last thing we saw, which is right here, we've got delta x equals v naught squared sine 2 theta all over our acceleration. I'm kind of reluctant to, yeah, let's just put acceleration for 9.81. Well, no, let's stick with it. I committed. I could have defined things a little bit better. I'm used to seeing g as, I guess, yeah. But that's fine. We're used to it being negative. We used that to get rid of a negative earlier, so we might as well stick with it. Okay. So, I want theta. I've told you that in this problem I would give you the number that is delta x, right there. And I would also give you the number that is v naught, that equals some number. And we're looking for that angle. Okay. So we want some thing that says theta equals some mess, and it's probably going to be a bit of a mess. So I'm going to get the sine function by itself by multiplying by 9.81 meters per second squared, dividing by the naught square that's going to eliminate that and that, and get my sine function by itself, 9.81 meters per second squared, divided by v naught squared. Okay, so I've got drawing it down here a little bit clearly. I've got sine 2 theta equals 9.81 meters per second squared times our delta x divided by v naught squared. Okay? So now I'm going to take the inverse sine of both sides. Sine negative 1 of sine 2 theta. Maybe I should use brackets. Equals the inverse sine of, oh, oh, what was that argument now? 9.81 meters per second squared, delta x over v naught squared. Welcome to actually difficult physics problems. Okay, so I can evaluate that. That's, these would just be numbers. I could take the inverse sine of that, and I would see that 2 theta equals the inverse sine. 9.81 meters per second squared times delta x over v naught squared. Divide both sides by 2. I'm going to put a 1 half there. And bingo. Theta equals 1 half the 
inverse sine 9.81 meters per second squared delta x v naught squared. If I give you how far it flew and its initial velocity, you can tell me the angle that it was projected at, what it was thrown or fired or whatever. So, roundabout and painful, and I'll be honest, the main reason that I wanted to do something like this was to throw a curveball at you. In most of the kinematic, or I'm sorry, the projectile motion problems, you're almost always looking for range. Sometimes you might be looking for initial velocity. Sometimes they'll ask you a couple other things like time, that sort of thing. But not very often are they going to ask you for theta. So, I wanted to hit you with something you wouldn't expect. And along the way, I showed you the derivation of where the range equation comes from. And this only simplifies to this, like I said earlier, because I decided to go with delta y equals zero. If we don't do that, you'll see it gets much, much, much messier. Give it a try if you want. I, I don't fully recommend it, but it's, it's good practice. And just get far enough where you can see how messy it'll be, and then give up, unless you're really gung ho. Uh, you'll end up with a bunch of terms in here. It gets pretty unpleasant pretty quickly. So, but we derive that equation, and in the end, we found our theta. 